Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we got something we need to talk about. That's low key. Oh, baby. Lemon drop and lollipop. Candy must be her name. Sweetness is the weakness. Ooh, I got a thing for you. Low key, y'all. Thank you, low key. Ladies and gentlemen, that is low, L O hyphen K E Y. Low key singing, I got a thing for you. Like I said, we're going to take y'all there. Whether you want to go there or not go there, we're going to take y'all there. Look, I was doing a video this morning, and that video was talking about Israel-Palestine and uh, UK artists known as Low Key, and his advocating for that since 2012. What I will do is I will tell you to go listen to his video, Palestine Will Never Die. Just type that in YouTube, Palestine Will Never Die. Click on the one that says low key, L-O-Y-K-E-Y. I mean, L-O-W-K-E-Y, excuse me. And then click on low key, Obama Nation. Obama Nation. President Obama, then Nation. But he's playing on the word Obama Nation. He was an Obama Nation. Now, he's not talking about Obama, Obama, Obama directly, but he's talking about Obama, Obama, Obama. You know what I'm saying? And I did that video and I also went after YouTube and talked about their censorship and about how they wouldn't allow you to talk about this or that. And I kind of liked it because I was playing part of Loki's video in the background. And let's just say it worked out to where that video deleted itself. So let's just suggest that it's not intended for me to post that. And so we're going to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Eon channel where we talk about things such as arbitrations. Now, most people don't know what an arbitration is. So let's explain the basics of an arbitration. The arbitration is where a person has a dispute with another person and they agree to allow someone else to make a determination over their dispute. When you guys have a bench trial, that's arbitration. Do not think that that is a judicial proceeding. There is no such thing as a judicial proceeding. A lawful proceeding is one with a trial by jury. Go back and look at the Constitution. It doesn't give you the right to a jury trial. It gives you the right to a trial by jury. A jury trial and a trial by jury are not the same thing. Anybody who tells you that they are, tell them then, fine. Then change the name to trial by jury, and we ain't got no problem. If it's the same thing, then you shouldn't have a problem calling it trial by jury from now on they'll have a problem. They'll never call it a trial by jury. They will always call it a jury trial because a jury trial is a statutory trial. Statutes. Choo, 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 train. Statutory trial. Statutes are not laws, ladies and gentlemen. Statutes were never law. What about the statutes at large? Statutes are not laws, ladies and gentlemen. Statutes were never law. The actual act of Congress is the law. Statute at large is not the act of Congress. Shh. But because some idiots have said that is the official law for the United States. No, it isn't. But because some idiots have said that is the official law of the United States, we're going to live with statute at large being the official law of the United States. Codes? Uh-uh. Can't deal with codes. All right. Let's continue, shall we? An arbitrator... Here's matters between the parties, and they rule based only on the contract. Has nothing to do with whether the arbitrator is best friends with somebody or somebody's grandmama, sister, uncle, cousin, niece. Uh, it doesn't matter any of that. The arbitrator must only look to the contract for its decision and its determination. The arbit can the arbitrator look to the law? Only if the contract permits it to look to the law. Other than that, the arbitration is only on the contract between the parties. The parties are the ones who 
set the law via contract. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just noticed this after 10 o'clock. So we have a meeting today at 11 for the training that I have to be prepared for. So this video won't be long. The arbitrator's decision is binding upon the parties. They can only challenge the arbitrator's decision if the arbitrator operated outside the contract and outside the authority delegated to the arbitrator in the contract. The arbitrator is only an arbitrator for the purpose of that contract, and that contract is only binding for the purpose of the individuals included in the contract. There are nine essential elements to an arbitration agreement. What are they? Well, there must be an agreement, a contract. That's one. Second, the agreement must be between two or more parties. Okay, that's two. The parties to the agreement must be, pay attention, must be competent adults able to enter into agreements. The contract must have an opt-out clause. Sorry. The contract must have an opt-out clause. Give the person an opportunity to say, no, I don't want to agree to that. I don't agree to that bull crap. And it must have an expiration date. The parties must be notified. The contract must be workable and doable. And it must have an arbitration clause. And it must have a commerce clause. Those are the nine elements to a valid arbitration contract. Go back and listen to it. The contracts that are at saalimited.com have all nine elements intentionally. And because you send a copy to the other party and it gives them an opportunity to opt out, it complies with the law. Here's the other thing that those contracts will do for you. Ladies and gentlemen, when you send that contract to the other party and they receive the contract, you must have a prior agreement with that party. Prior agreement? That's right. Y'all must have a prior relationship, something that binds y'all. Oh, yeah, we got a prior relationship. Okay, then fine. You're doing fine. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about a thing. Okay? Once you have all of that, you have everything you need. Now, do you have to go through arbitration? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to go through arbitration. But arbitration, the award, the award is binding and valid. There is nothing anyone can do about that, so long as all of the other parameters that was just mentioned are complied with. Just that simple. You see, the reason why the Supreme Court in Archer versus Henry Schein, in the unanimous decision, meaning all the judges agreed, the reason why they said that the courts have no jurisdiction over an arbitration contract because an arbitration contract is a private agreement and the courts cannot impede the obligation of contract. Now pay attention, an arbitration agreement is a contract. The courts are prohibited by law from impeding the obligation of contract. If the contract does not delegate authority to the court and the contracts on salimited.com gives exclusive jurisdiction to the arbitrator, not to the judges. You don't want a judge making a determination. Why? Because judicial officers, the ones who are members of the court making a determination, they do it based upon what's best for the court, not what's best for the parties. They don't follow the letter of the contract. They're worried about images. Whereas an arbitrator, a real arbitrator, doesn't care about image. They care about the letter of the law. And the law between the parties is the contract, as written. Which is why the Supreme Court came to that unanimous decision stating that the courts must follow the contract and the act, the Arbitration Act, as written. And Judge Kavanaugh, giving the opinion, said, that when the parties to a contract have agreed that an arbitrator rather than the court will make all decisions, 
the court must defer to the arbitrator. And it cannot override the decision of the arbitrator just to fulfill its own personal idea of what justice is. That's why you want an arbitrator and not a judge. That's why you want to give the arbitrator exclusive jurisdiction. Again, the arbitrator is not there to do what you want. The arbitrator is not there to be your so-called right-hand man. The arbitrator has to be independent. So the arbitrator must rule based on the contract. Has nothing to do with whether or not you know the arbitrator. And many people have had that. They, they've given that feeling that that's what they were expecting when they had arbitrations done by me. That I was going to somehow side with them because I'm somehow supposed to know what they know. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not how arbitration works. Arbitration has nothing to do with all that junk y'all hear on YouTube. Arbitration is the facts. Whether or not this happened, whether or not the, you complied with all nine of those key elements to an arbitration contract. If you complied with that, and if the other party's in default, then the arbitrator issues a default. But however, if you did a default for 800 quadzillion dollars, the arbitrator has to be reasonable. The arbitrator doesn't just award you $900 billion because you wrote $900 billion. Prove you case in point. I did a, did a $30 million contract against Google. Against, uh, what's the name of the other company? Alphabet Soup. Alphabet. And YouTube. All three. Because the parent company is Alphabet, I went after all three. Guess what, y'all? The arbitrator of that $30 million claim only gave $450,000. $450,000? What the? F and I couldn't say anything about it. Why? Because I agreed that the arbitrator's decision would be final. The arbitrator didn't violate any rights. The arbitrator only decided that $450,000 was it. And I was stuck. Guess what? Went to court. Google didn't contest. But the court decided to be stupid. The court decided to ignore the contract, to ignore the arbitration award, and dismiss my request for confirmation. Just dismissed it. Didn't deny the arbitration, didn't say it was fraud or anything, just dismissed it. These are judges who, when they see my name, they block all access to the court. Right now, I'm getting ready to go after these judges. I don't care. Uh, now I get to, eventually, I got a couple more suits I have to file, let them play games with me. Then we're going to the Supreme Court and let the Supreme Court deny me. And then I go after bonds. Okay, those of you who have arbitration awards and you were sitting on those awards and nothing has ever happened, first, you need to go back and listen to the tax credit videos because the, pay attention, IRS tax topic 453 is your best friend. Pay attention. That's the first thing. Second, sorry, I had to step away. I made me some popcorn. And I got to now cover my popcorn with my popcorn maker so that I can take care of it later. Because I made a lot. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have an arbitration award that's already been issued by an arbitrator, here's what you need to do. You take that award and you file a small claims lawsuit, not for the value of the award. Oh, God, no. You want enforcement of the contract, not enforcement of the award. You want to show that the contract is valid. So you need to just have proof that you mailed it to the other party, the other party received it, and they did not timely opt out. Ta-da! That they had a duty to respond. There must be a duty to respond. That's why there must be a prior relationship. Because in all contracts, the parties have the obligation to communicate with each other. Ta-da! And when you request documents that they are the custodian of record, and they, by law, must supply, and you ask them to supply it and they don't supply it, ta-da! The contract says that by failing to do that, they opt back into the agreement, even though they may have intended to opt out. Ta-da! Okay? Now, while you're in small claims court, you're only going in there on the issue of the binding contract. Now, of course, the judge is going to want to easily tell you your contract isn't binding. 
because that's the easy way out. Remember, the judge has to do what's in the best interest of the court. So before the judge tells you that, you're going to pull up the contract that that company whom you're doing business with has on their site. And you want to pull up anything, if they got an arbitration clause or anything like that. Now, hold on one, one let me make sure you all understand. If they can change the terms and conditions of their agreement, you can change the terms and conditions of your agreement. And that's what the contracts on the website says. Notice of change in terms and conditions. Okay? And so you want to highlight their contract. And you want to highlight the change in terms and condition. You want to highlight the opt-out clause. And you want to call whoever the president of that company is to the stand. Hey, did you send this out to your customers? Well, what happens if your customers continue to use your service and they don't opt out? Oh, they opt in? Really, without even signing anything? Is that legal? Get it on the record. Because guess what? You just did the same exact thing. Okay? So all you do is highlight those nine areas in your questioning with that representative. And after you highlight those nine areas, then you take off and show that your contract had the exact same thing. So under equal protection of law, the doctrine, not the clause, because that clause is in the 14th Amendment. We don't care about the 14th Amendment. We care about the doctrine. The doctrine comes from, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal, endowed by their creator. Okay? That right there, ladies and gentlemen, from the declaration, evidence is the fact that if they're all created equal, then they all have the same rights. And if they have the right to create a contract to bind you, you have a right to create a contract to bind them. Small claims court is your very best friend. That's all you're looking for is a judgment on that. Now you can go back in the federal district court and say, sorry, Charlie, the court ruled that you were overruled. Yeah, see, we were just going and seeing whether the contract was valid or not. And we got the court to document the contract was valid. That's all you're doing. You're not appealing a decision. You see, the validity of the contract, the court has no jurisdiction in determining unless the other party is contesting. That's it. If there's no contesting of the contract, then there is no issue for a court to challenge the validity of the contract. The other party has to challenge the validity of the contract. But hold on. If there is a request to confirm an arbitration award, there can be no challenge to the validity of the contract because that must be had before the arbitrator. The judges have no jurisdiction to determine whether or not the contract is valid or not. Go back and read Henry versus uh, Archer and White. Henry Schein versus Archer and White. And you'll see that the court said that the, the Supreme Court unanimously determined that the courts have no jurisdiction to determine the validity of a contract that has been delegated to the sole responsibility of the arbitrator for making such a determination. They don't have jurisdiction, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there we go. There you have it. Those of you who have that, now you can now go after the bond of those judges, okay? And if the small claims court chooses to ignore the law, then you can go after the bond of that judge. Stop going after the judges themselves. Go after their bond. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I'm about to go lay down. I got to get ready for the meeting, so I'm about to go lay down for a couple of minutes because it's going to be a long day. Y'all take care. Thank y'all for helping me help you all with this empowerment series video. We'll be back shortly. Oh, look at that. Oh, by the way, I should tell y'all. 64 videos in one month as of this video. Amazing! Gotta go.